around 20,000 to 50,000 slaves in regions where rebellion had already been subdued were immediately emancipated. It could not be forced in areas still under rebellion, but as the Union Army took control of Confederate regions, the proclamation provided legal support for freeing more than 3 million slaves in those regions. Prior to the proclamation, escaped slaves were either returned to their masters or held in camps as contraband for later return. The proclamation applied only to slaves in Confederate held lands. It did not apply to those in the four states that were not in rebellion, which were Kentucky, Maryland, Delaware, and Missouri, which were unnamed, nor to Tennessee, which was unnamed or occupied by Union troops, which was also on occupation. The proclamation lifted the spirits of African Americans, both freed and slaves. It led many slaves to escape from their masters and get to the Union lines to obtain their freedom. The first watch night was December 31st, 1863, excuse me, 1862, as blacks waited for the word that the Emancipation Proclamation had been signed. The watch night service can be traced back to gatherings also known as Freedom's Eve. On that night, black slaves and free slaves came together in churches and private homes all across the nation, awaiting that the proclamation had become law. At the stroke of midnight, it was January 1, 1863, all slaves in the Confederate States were declared legally free. When the news was received, there were prayers, shouts, and songs of joy as many people fell to their knees and thanked God. Blacks have gathered in churches annually on New Year's Eve ever since, praising God for bringing us safely through another year. It's been over a century since the first Freedom's Eve, and tradition still brings us together as, as at this time every year to celebrate how we got over. In my closing, I would like to ask this question. Are we really free? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, Amen. this is the welcome and occasion function.